Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Data Pioneer from the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and uh, appreciate you joining me today and uh, watching my video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, the Linux Unix Tech Channel, please go ahead and do that and uh, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, Ian, go ahead, please, and subscribe to that as well. And uh, like that video, rather. And um, today, I've got a little bit of a treat for you. Um, I haven't looked at Fedora for a while. The last time I used Fedora uh, distro was uh, in a combination, a spin, if you will, of another distro called Ubuntu that you're, I'm sure you're familiar with. And it was called Fiduntu 2012. So it's been a while. It's been about seven years. Um, but I thought I'd give Fedora 31 Workstation a look because it has uh, recently been upgraded and uh, I wanted to give it a try. I'm out on the Fedora website right now and uh, Fedora is available in the server and Workstation. And so for Fedora 31 Workstation, if you click on this link, it takes you out here. It talks about uh, what the Workstation does, uh, virtualization possibilities, containerization, etc., etc. And then if you click on this link here uh, for download, it'll take you out to the download site. Uh, the Fedora Media Writer is available for Windows or Mac OS, but the Linux uh, ISO for the Fedora distribution, uh, in this case Fedora 31 x86-64 DVD ISO, is available from this download link right here and so you can click on it. I will put a link out to this video uh, under the video here uh, when it gets uploaded to YouTube on this channel. Uh, but anyway, if you want to come along and join me today, uh, I'm going to do a full system setup and product review of Fedora 31 Workstation. Come join me. Okay, I'm out on my uh, VirtualBox uh, 6.0 Manager and I'm going to go ahead and set up uh, Fedora Workstation. So I'm going to click on machine and new and then I'm going to type in Fedora 31 workstation underscore x8 x64 all right and I'm going to give this thing uh, four gigs of RAM so that's 4096 megabytes click create uh, I want to give uh, this particular uh, virtual machine 50 gigabytes of VDI space uh, virtual box disk image click create now that that's created I'm going to go up and click the settings button and come down to system I'm going to untick the floppy and select the hard disk and move it up the boot order um, for display I'm going to give it the full 128 megabytes of video memory graphics controller I'm going to reset to VBox VGA and for storage, I'm going to select empty and select the uh, optical disk media, choose virtual optical disk. And then uh, I've already downloaded the Fedora Workstation Live 31-1.9 ISO. I'm going to select that. And I downloaded that from the uh, fedora.org website. Click open. Uh, for audio, I'm going to leave it as it is. Everything is set normally. For network, I do need to change the adapter that's enabled here for adapter 1. Away from that to bridged adapter for my Realtek PCIe GBE family controller uh, because I want the VM to be on the same network as my main PC. Uh, then I'm going to come down to USB and select USB 3.0, click OK. I'm ready to launch this thing, so let's go ahead and launch it. Click the Start button. When it comes up, I'm going to go ahead and change the view as I normally do. Um, and uh, so give it a few seconds. And under view, let's select full screen mode. All right. And so now we have start Fedora workstation and test. I'm going to go ahead and just do it selected on, could go down to test, but I'm going to go up to start and hit enter key on the keyboard and go ahead and get this thing launched. We will be uh, launching into the live version of Fedora Workstation 31. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. It's checking the disk. I really don't need it to do that uh, because this media is a virtual machine. I don't need to have it verify it. 
All right, so it's now going through its boot up process for the live version. And when it comes up to the live version, we'll get in and set up the account and everything for the virtual machine. I'm looking forward to taking a look at Fedora 31 Workstation um, because uh, Fedora is a product I've used before uh, in this uh, system setup and product review. I'm going to take another look at it. It's been a while since I've seen Fedora. Uh, it is based on Red Hat. Um, Fedora is a Red Hat spinoff, uh, as is CentOS. Um, but Fedora is based on the GNOME uh, desktop manager. And so it uh, will have GNOME. I'm not sure which version exactly of GNOME a desktop manager it has, but it's probably 3. Dot something. All right, so it's coming up to full 1920 by 1080. And uh, here we are. Okay, so now what we can do here is we can try Fedora, okay, or we can install to hard disk. Now, I really don't need to try Fedora here because I'm not installing this on bare metal. So I'm going to go ahead and click the install to hard disk or hard drive and um, get this thing underway. All right, so let's go up to activities and um, See, I thought we could do this without having to uh, come back out again. All right, install to hard disk. Here we go. Here we are. All right, so it came up for me. I thought I was going to have to go looking for it. All right, so now I'm in the Welcome to Fedora 31, and uh, its uh, language is English, and the United States English here is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and um, select Continue here. All right, so now that I'm in the installation summary, um, the system needs to be uh, set up for the installation destination. And so I'm going to go ahead and click that. And it brings us to this installation destination screen. I'm going to select the 50 gigabyte hard disk. Okay, I uh, don't need to add a disk. Um, I have selected it, however, and now I need to set up the storage configuration as an automatic. I'm not going to do anything weird here, uh, but I do need to encrypt my data, so I want to do that. And now that I've done that, selected the hard disk, I should be able to select Done, and it should move on. Uh, I do need to put in the disk encryption passphrase, however. Let me go ahead and do that. All right, and confirm it. All right, so it's confirmed. Let's save the passphrase. All right, and so now it is checking the storage to, to make sure that that uh, is set up properly. And now it's cleared it. And so let's go to the date and time. Let's check out the date and time. Uh, it is America, region, city, New York. That's where I'm at in this uh, time zone. I'm actually uh, right there uh, in North Carolina, but it's in the New York time zone, so I'm good to go here. So let's, uh, we've got new, uh, or network time rather, uh, turned on, so that's good. And let's click done and move past this. All right, so now that that is done, uh, we can go ahead and begin installation. So let me click Begin Installation. At this point, uh, there is no going back. It's uh, formatting the uh, VDI space and configuring the uh, Dev SDA2, um, the hard drive, the virtual hard drive itself, which is designated Dev SDA2. Uh, it's going to go ahead and install the system and uh, this is going to take a little bit of time, not too much, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the video and come back when this is completed. Okay, I'm back and uh, the installation process has completed and as you can see it says complete. Uh, did, did, uh, this did take about uh, 15 minutes or so 
So it does take a while to install Fedora 31. Not too bad though, I've seen longer installs. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click the Finish Installation button here. And that should um, take us out to a restart of the system. If not, I'll restart it manually. Um, I may just do that anyway, uh, just to ensure that it is going to restart properly. So let's go ahead and do a restart. Restart the system. It should boot up now to the hard drive rather than the optical media. And uh, I did encrypt the drive, so we'll have to enter the encryption password. I like to do that because if um, you know if it's on bare metal, especially if somebody takes your device, um, they're not able to get into it. They have to reformat the whole drive in order to use it. All right, so it's uh, coming up now in VirtualBox, and hopefully it'll come back to 1920 by 1080 full screen. I have a uh, 1080p widescreen monitor. Okay. Here is the Fedora screen that we get, and I need to enter the encryption password, or the decryption password in this case. Let me go ahead and do that. And decrypt the drive, and it should boot up. This is a very professional looking uh, uh, login screen. Well, not login screen, but uh, startup screen. We'll get to the login screen here in a moment. Kind of reminds me of Windows. Windows 10. Um, you don't usually see this in the Linux distro, so very nice. Looking forward to getting into Fedora 31 Workstation and taking a look at what we have. Um, heard some good things about it, and so uh, we'll, we'll check in, uh, check that out here in a moment. Okay, so um, it's coming up now, and it should get to a login screen here, uh, unless it needs to set up the accounts and everything. I really can't recall from the previous experience with Fedora, but uh, we haven't set up an account yet, so we won't get a login screen or shouldn't. But here's the background that you get by default, and uh, we should be, yeah, there we go. Now we have a welcome screen, uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and click next, and it talks about privacy, location services, uh, automatic problem reporting, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. Here you can connect your online accounts, uh, Google, Nextcloud, Microsoft, or Facebook. I am not going to do any of those here. On This is a VM. So let's skip that. And now it's asking me for my name. And you put in Dan Calloway and put in my username of Data Pioneer. All right. I'm not going to use an enterprise login. Click Next. Going to set a password for my account. Let me go ahead and do that and confirm it. All right, so it looks like that's strong enough and it did confirm. So I'm going to go ahead and click next and it says ready to go. So let's start using Fedora and uh, click that button there. And so we get back to the desktop and we have to wait for it to come up. It's not completely come up yet. I believe I will get a login screen here to log into the account because I do not have automatic login set up. Uh, but it's possible it may go straight in. It did go straight in. All right. So the next uh, restart of the system, it will come up to a login screen. Um, all right. So here we are. We're on the getting started uh, window. And we've got some common tasks over here. Browse the web, connect to online accounts, and get online. If you're not familiar with GNOME or you need GNOME help, you're, there's a link here for GNOME help as well. Uh, here under switching tasks, we have a link for change the date, time, and time zone, use the time or the system search, and then launch applications. Then under use window and uh, workspaces, we have to change the wallpaper. I will do that here shortly. Use windows and workspaces and switch tasks. Let me go ahead and uh, close this window. All right, and um, let's go out and look at uh, some things here. Uh, if I click that, that's going to show the applications, and that should come right up. One of the things I see already in Fedora 31 Workstation is it's very responsive, very responsive. So um, let me go ahead and click that. Get back out to the workstation. Let me right-click and change the background. 
And um, so when that comes up, it shouldn't take very long at all. All right, so we have it here. I'm going to go down and select a new um, new background. I don't like the one here. I mean, it's okay, but I, I prefer one like that one. And notice here we have set background and lock screen, set background or set lock screen. This is new uh, in uh, this particular installer and not necessarily new to Fedora. I've seen this before in Ubuntu. Um, so we have this. So I, I'm just going to set background for now. And uh, that should bring up the new background that we have. Okay, and so we have a new background set up. I'm going to go ahead and restart this and then we'll come back after we log in. Okay, I've logged back into my Fedora 31 workstation uh, desktop. Here we are, we're looking at the desktop again. And uh, let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, across the top, we have the Activities button. When you click on it, it opens up this screen here. And um, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Um, in the middle, we have the calendar and the time. And so if we click that, we have the um, calendar off to the right hand side. We can add world clocks. We can add a weather uh, selection here for location. Uh, or we can we can clear that as well with no notifications here. Okay. Uh, and then off to the far right, we have the uh, wired connection here for the network setup. Uh, my name. I've got my uh, control here for volume. Um, I have a control here for I click that, it um, will bring up uh, an interface here momentarily. Uh, it tells me that I got software updates available. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, but anyway, it brings up the uh, settings here for devices. Uh, and we'll, we'll look at that here in a moment. Um, here's the volume control again. Here is the control for setting up, um, you know, turning off, restarting, or powering down. I'm going to cancel. And then lastly, we have uh, the down arrow, which does the same. Okay, so let's get into the activities. Uh, as I did mention before we get into activities, though, this is a GNOME uh, 3 uh, workstation that you're looking at, or a desktop environment that you're looking at in the uh, Fedora 31 workstation. Uh, so keep that in mind. It's a little beefy, um, but yet, even though it's a GNOME 3.x. Uh, environment, which typically is slower than most, like XFCE or uh, others, um, even KDE for that matter. Um, it's This particular uh, operating system, uh, distro of Linux, is pretty responsive, to be honest. And uh, I was really surprised about that. Um, I, I recall from, as I mentioned earlier, when I worked with Fedora 31 workstation, uh, or F Fedora 31, rather, um, Fedora, rather, uh, Feduntu 2012, back in 2012. Um, it wasn't as responsive as this is, and so I was surprised. With Fedora 31 Workstation, it, it seems to be very responsive. So let's click Activities and come down. We've got the Firefox web browser. I'll go ahead and click on that and open that up. Now, Firefox has a tendency to be slow sometimes, so it has nothing to do with the operating system, but that opened up fairly quickly for me. Um, all right, so I'm out on the fedoraproject.org documentation site. And uh, so let me go over to the pancake and click on that and come down to help. And let's go out to about Firefox. Uh, and so I can see that we're running. Um, let me go ahead and click, get rid of these notifications. I'm running Firefox browser 70.064 bit. That is the latest browser from Mozilla. Uh, for Fedora. Uh, so we've got the latest version here. All right, so let's go ahead and close Fedora. Uh, I mean, uh, close uh, the Fedora site on the Firefox web browser. Let's go back into activities and come down. We've got the rhythm box. We've got files. Let me click on that. And we do have uh, here the pretty plain Jane looking, um, if you will, um, files manager um, and we are running um, this is files 3.34.1 stable 
uh, and you can go out on the website here. But that's what we have, and there's really not any way to really tweak this to make it look uh, better. I know if you're familiar with uh, Ubuntu 1804 LTS or 1910, you do have the same um, file manager, which is files. Uh, you can change it. It does look uh, much better, um, but uh, that's not the case here. I, that's okay with me. I mean, I, I don't mind uh, that the fact that you can't really tweak the look of it. Let me go ahead and close that. And let's go into activities again, come down to uh, the software. And this is the software store available uh, in Fedora. I'll bring it up to full screen. you got a plethora of stuff here, guys, for featured applications. Audio and video, games, developer tools, communications and news, graphics and photography, education and science, productivity, add-ons, and utilities. Uh, and if you scroll down uh, here, uh, you've got... Uh, Stellarium, you know, Inkscape, you know, et cetera, et cetera. These are the editor's picks. Uh, and then you've got the recommended audio video applications here. Uh, and you've got the recommended games. I'm not a gamer, so I'm not really that uh, interested in, in games that are available here. But if you are, uh, there are plenty of them here. Now, under audio and video, if you click on that, it takes a few seconds to develop, but you've got a bunch of stuff in here. G Radio is one that I like. I've got it installed uh, on my laptop. I really like it because I can get radio stations from around the world, news, music, etc., etc. Uh, here's Quad Labette, which is a, uh, a manager of music, uh, kind of like iTunes, but is an open source product, Quad Labette. I use that uh, quite a bit. You've got Audacious, you've got Sound Converter. Uh, to name a few here. So you've got quite a bit of things here to pick from. So the list goes on and on and on. Uh, so you, there is no lack of ap applications to install and play with here in uh, Fedora 31 Workstation. Games, of course, uh, I'll click on that to show you what we have available um, when it does come up. But here are the games that are available. If you see any of the titles that you, rec that you uh, recall or you're familiar with, uh, you might want to give Fedora 31 Workstation a, a try just for that purpose because uh, there, there's a whole ton of games here, guys. Uh, if you're a gamer, uh, you've come to the right distro. Communications and news. Uh, here we've got a bunch of stuff. Gary, uh, Pigeon Internet Messenger, Thunderbird, Transmission, Client, uh, Wireshark, uh, Video Downloader, uh, Life Rhea, you know, aggregator, um, you name it. We've got a bunch of things here that you can take advantage of under communications and news. Um, graphics and photography, of course, you've got uh, many things here to choose from beyond just the standard GNU uh, image manipulation program or my paint. Uh, and here the list is uh, quite a bit of stuff. You know, Blender, Darktable, uh, if you're familiar with that. Um, and here the list goes on as well, okay? Uh, and then under education and science, you've got some things there. Um, productivity, um, if I open that up, you've got your LibreOffice suite, okay? And uh, LibreOffice Writer is one of the highlighted ones. Calibre, which is a, uh, a ebook manager editor. Uh, I use that a lot in Windows. I use a lot in... Uh, Fedora, uh, because I've got it on the laptop, as I said, and I've used Calibre before. I've used it over the years. I really like it. It's a great manager of ebooks and other media. Uh, here we've got a bunch of other things in here, as you can see. Okay, so take advantage of that. Uh, and I won't look at it anymore. So you've got things you can look at add ons and utilities, and I will move on. Uh, so take a look at that when you get an opportunity. Okay, so under activities now, we've got the terminal. And I've got the terminal uh, tweaked out to my solarized uh, view. I'm going to go ahead and click on HTOP. And I can see that HTOP is not installed. Um, but uh, there is an application that I wanted to talk about, so this is a good time to do it, that I see that is available. And I've never seen it before. Um, it is available for Fedora 31 Workstation. And that's called Toolbox. And what Toolbox is, is basically a sandbox for your uh, applications. And so you can run those in Toolbox 
before you uh, run them uh, on your system so that anything that happens within Toolbox doesn't affect the system. Or you can just leave them there. Uh, and so let me see if Toolbox is installed. So to install an application in uh, Fedora 31, since it is a Red Hat um, product uh, supported by Red Hat, you can use sudo uh, yum, which is the yellow dog update manager, or you can use DNF. So I'm going to do a sudo DNF uh, search toolbox to see if I have it installed in my password. And it should tell me if it is installed. Okay, and looks like I don't see where it says it is installed. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and install it. Um, so let me clear the screen here. And let me do a sudo dnf install toolbox. And install it. All right, and so it's asking me, do I want to install it? And I'm going to say uh, yes. Okay, so it's complete, so it's installed, and so let's go ahead and use it. So in order to use Toolbox, you can you can see here that I'm actually on my um, prompt here in the terminal. Okay, so it's an unprivileged prompt for Data Pioneer localhost. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and run the command sudo toolbox enter and enter the toolbox. Now, if it's the first time it's going to ask me, there's no toolbox containers found, do you want to create them? I'm going to say yes. And uh, image is required to create the toolbox container. And the download registry.fedoraproject.org is 500 megabytes. Do I want to do that? I can just hit enter for yes, or I can put Y for yes and say yes. Let's go ahead and do that. And uh, it's going to create that toolbox. Uh, it's downloading that registry and creating the image itself. So you get an image, toolbox image, that is a container uh, that you can install things in. And I'll demonstrate that here in a moment when we get uh, get this going. There's another command I want to show you for toolbox. It's called toolbox list. And you can list the toolboxes that you currently have installed on the system. And so I'll do that once I get in takes a few seconds for this to um, install, so be patient. I like uh, Toolbox. Uh, like I said, I've never used it before, but I have used it on my laptop. I did not know if I had installed it on the VM, um, but apparently not, so I've, I'm doing that now. It's showing you how it's done. Um, and it's just a simple matter, uh, if you're running Fedora 31 Workstation, just a matter of searching for it and then installing it the way I did. If you need to go back and, and replay this video to see what I did to get it installed, you can do that. All right, so it says to, it's failed to call org.freedesktop.flatpak. I got that on my laptop too. I'm not sure what's going on there, but it doesn't affect the use of Toolbox. Let me clear this. And so let me do a Toolbox, well, let me do a sudo Toolbox uh, list and list out the toolboxes that we currently have. We do have one created. That's the ID for it right there. Okay, and uh, so we're okay. And so let's go ahead and enter the toolbox. And so let's do a toolbox enter. And what's gonna happen here, um, it enters the toolbox and you'll notice there is a dot out in front of the prompt here, okay? It's kind of a, a purplish looking prompt. That means we are in the toolbox. And it's an indicator to you, the user, that you're not in the system as a whole, but now you're in a containerized toolbox. And so rather than having Data Pioneer at localhost, I now have Data Pioneer at toolbox. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to install HTOP. So let's do a sudo uh, dnf install HTOP. Okay. Let's go ahead and install HTOP here. And uh, once we get it installed, we'll bring it up. Now, this should install the application in the toolbox, but not out on the system. Uh, and so if I needed to get to HTOP, if I wanted to do that, uh, I could uh, get into the container and I could run it from there and it wouldn't affect the system at all. 
however it touches the system. It actually uh, can interact with the system. So let me run HTOP and pull it up. And here we are. We're in HTOP now. And so we're running 840 megs uh, out of 4 gigs of memory. It's not too bad. 128 tasks, 227 threads, one running. Load averages look pretty good, 0 0.67, 0 0.83, 0 0.64. We've been up for 17 minutes here. And so let me go ahead. I will go ahead and shut this down now and uh, close the terminal. All right, so we close the terminal. So let's go out and uh, bring up the terminal again. And we will not be in the toolbox at this point. So we are not in the toolbox, OK? If we were in the toolbox, all we have to do is type exit. But since I closed um, HTOP the way I did, it closed the terminal itself. So now let me try to run HTOP again. And notice it says uh, HTOP command not found. That means that HTOP is not installed out on the system. HTOP is only installed in the toolbox. And so if I once again run toolbox, enter, OK? And then I'm in, now I can see that I'm in the toolbox. If I run HTOP again, I should be able to bring it up, and I do, OK? Um, thought I could do an F10 and get out of it, but I can't, so I'm just going to close it this way. All right, so check out Toolbox. I think you'll like it. Uh, it, it you can use it to uh, install your favorite utilities and other files. If you want to test out an application that you're wanting to install, test it out in your toolbox. Don't test it out on the system. So if something goes wrong, uh, it's an easy uh, matter of uh, you know eliminating it and uh, rerunning it or fixing the problem, finding the solution, and then coming back into it again before you install it out on the system. OK, so under Activities again, let's go down here to Show Applications. And it brings all your apps up here. And so uh, we have all the apps up here as well. I'm on the frequent ones now, but let me click the All. And that brings all of the applications up. We've got Foxes, which is a virtualization application. I won't get into that in this video. Uh, but this is like, kind of like VirtualBox or uh, VMware for Linux. Got Calendar, Cheese, Clementine, Clocks, Contacts, um, Document Scan, Files, Firefox, G Radio, and the LibreOffice Suite. Now, you'll notice of all, all these are together in one. Uh, uh, box here. These were separate before, and I actually dragged them out onto one of the previous LibreOffice uh, applications, and it produced this particular um, application here. Okay, and so if I wanted to take RhythmBox perhaps and combine it with Clementine, I could come up and do this, and now I've got um, uh, RhythmBox and Clementine together in the sound and video. Okay. I can actually rename it if I want to and just call it my sound and video uh, apps. Okay. And let's do a rename. All right. So it's got it there. I'll probably rename it back. Okay. So then we've got settings. And here under settings, um, you've got a bunch of things here as well. Displays. I'm in the 1920 by 1080, 16 to 9 uh, ratio here with the large screen, widescreen, um, 1080p monitor that I have. Um, you've got keyboard shortcuts. You've got mouse and touchpad if you're on a, a laptop, for, for instance. Printers here, I don't have any set up yet. Removable media. And you've got Thunderbolt and color. If I go back out here, I've got background. Um, and here's a bunch of the backgrounds that we have available. Not bad. Pretty good selection. I'm on this one right here, of course. But you've got a you know handful, and then you can actually go out and get backgrounds. You can add a picture from your computer or whatever you want to do. Um, notifications. Um, we've got the search here that you can turn on and off for various categories. Region and language. Uh, universal app access, online accounts. Got a bunch of online accounts that you can access and set up here within Fedora 31 Workstation. You can you have your privacy settings here for your microphone camera. You can turn the camera off, turn the microphone off if you want to, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. For your applications, you've got things that, that will handle that as well. And then for sharing, you can share various things here. 
uh, on the system and out on the network. And you've got sound that you can control, sound levels, output, balance, input, etc. power. You can blank the screen. I've got never, uh, etc. Here for network settings, I'm connected wired here, so I've got that set up. I do have a VPN a server that I've set up on my Raspberry Pi, so I may set that up here later and access the VPN on my Raspberry Pi through that server. Here's the devices again. We already looked at that. And then the last thing is details. Okay, This is Fedora 31. Here's my device name, localhost.local domain. I've got three or four gigs of memory, etc., etc., etc. Now, I didn't tell you that Fedora 31 Workstation, uh, the minimum requirements for this particular application, if you are distro rather of Linux, that if you want to install it, let's say on bare metal, you need at least a 10 gigabyte hard drive. Who doesn't have that these days? Or at least 10 gigabytes of free space. Uh, you need at least one gigabyte of RAM. Who doesn't have that anymore? Uh, typical standard is four, uh, but minimum two for most folks. But uh, one is the minimum standard for Fedora 31. And then uh, you've got your disk space and you've got your memory uh, and uh, don't think there's any particular video graphics, just a standard video graphics setup uh, will work for Fedora 31. Okay? And uh, you can, uh, this is the 64 bit version. Uh, the workstation, there is no 32 bit version for the workstation that I'm aware of. This is GNOME version 3.34.1 desktop. Okay? All right, so um, we've taken a look at um, Fedora 31 workstation. Uh, there's a lot here, and uh, so, you know, if you, if you like this video, if it helped you at all, if you like the system setup and product review, uh, let me know in the comments down below the video. If you want to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and do that. Hit the bell so that I can notify you every time I upload a video. And so thank you for joining me today, and have a great day.